Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today we actually have a two round mock draft and this was actually made yesterday. So by the day you're seeing this, this was made, I guess, two days ago. So there might've been some additional signings and whatnot. So as we get deeper into the draft, you might see me like talk about something and it's just, uh, it hasn't materialized or something else has, you know, popped up. So keep that in mind as we go through this one, but it was a super fun one. I haven't seen any signing signings as of yet that would kind of intrude on some of my stuff. So it, it, sh it should be really good and we got a long one here so let's hop right into it number one overall we're going caleb williams it's just kind of the default i'm not really gonna you know sit here on this one this is kind of qb1 he's got a good uh floor i think a lot of people are kind of pointing out the player he can be and might be in like three years or so but i i truly think caleb williams comes in with the i, I guess the best floor in the class he's really good at getting through progressions and something that's not really you know, put out there with Caleb Williams is his ability to the one get through his progression and two, his decision making. It's actually not terrible, despite what people might see on social media or something. It might be blown out of proportion. It might be talked about. I don't think it's actually that bad. And I don't see how this is like a bad pick. So Chicago fans, you'd rather have Justin Fields. I just uh, sit down and watch some Caleb Williams for a while and hopefully your mind changes. And if it doesn't, I, I don't know what else could. Washington, number two, we're just going to go Jane Daniels here. I don't know how much like people hear this, but a lot of mock drafts are what you hear about. And then like rankings are what you see. This is again, just happening with my ears. Apparently the NFL... Some of the better draft analysts out there are not high on Drake May. And so he's kind of fallen down after we go or going through these guys again for my uh, final rankings. Jaden Daniels probably has the edge here for number two as well. So we're just going to stick to that. Washington Commanders have themselves a new mobile quarterback and someone I don't think changes your franchise wide right away. But I think he also offers a higher floor than people like to look at. His arm is not nearly as good as people talk about. I think it's been, uh, quote unquote, romanticized, as people I've heard uh, say. So I, I think Daniels, as good of a quarterback as he is, I don't think his ceiling's up, up in a way. I think Drake May is the higher ceiling player. But if you're Washington, I can really see the uh, the thought process for the number two overall. And if they end up selecting Jane Daniels, I wouldn't have a problem, problem with it personally. Drake May and Jacoby Brissett going to be in a little quarterback uh, battle there over the off season to see who's kind of got the uh, the better i guess who gets ahead honestly i think that's the way you'd put it if you watch these guys in training camp and you realize drake may's got it right away then go ahead but i would not be shy to sit him actually i know it sounds kind of crazy and especially with the jumps that people have made this last probably month where you heard drake may number two drake may's amazing drake may we love him and now all of a sudden it's like okay he's a fringe you know top 10 talent positional value puts him top five to ten he might need to sit for you or he might need to develop here and he might need to do this checklist and kind of go through and that is fair i, I that's I, I came out of the uh my notes were like i think he's like the jordan love type not nearly um i think love was in such a good position to sit for three years i don't think may needs to sit for even you know a full year he could just sit for half half a year or something adapt to the uh the nature there gets through um i get training testing uh practice just different things and see what kind of works out with him because he could use a lot of workshopping and uh, i think that one thing that really stood out to tape with me for may was the lack of progressions it was literally stare down your first and if you know, you're aligned with the elite less amount of trust in it, the quicker he was to take off. And there was just some things that stuck out to me about May. And it wouldn't surprise me to see the, the Patriots trade down here or not go quarterback. Speaking of trades, this is definitely a trade down spot, but we're going Marvin Harrison Jr., that was framey as hell. Anywho, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., clear-cut wide receiver one, got the size, he's got the athleticism, he separates, and oh me, oh my, he looks really good. And I don't think we need to go much further. Marvin Harrison Jr., good player, uh, good person. I don't know what the, uh, the fresh analysis is of his personality how teams are looking at him because of blowing off a uh, a day at the combine with media not really a great look so I don't, i'm curious to see how um I, if we'll ever get a reason for that or if it'll just be one of those like looming questions we've got our first trade of this thing it'll be lac los angeles chargers trading with the chicago bears and the bears are trading up four spots and the numbers would look very different in real life but here all it takes is one third round pick so we're gonna we're gonna act like that's enough and it would look again a lot different in in real life to move up nine to five especially with 
this class and the chicago bears are going to select malik neighbors after trading up and now people are kind of curious or might be against this move and i get it i mean i'm all with the the slow process that ryan pulse has been pulling but this offseason there seems to be a different sense of urgency and maybe a new sense of hope you're, you're resetting your team basically and you're <laughs> the defense is not set you've got the secondary those are your guys uh the now edge rushers defensive line driven dexter uh zach pickens justin jones is out of there montez sweats in there now uh new edge rushers like this team is now ryan poles offensive uh line seems to be in a, an okay place right now and then you bring in uh malik neighbors to pair up well with dj moore similar players in a sense but i don't think they're exactly the same they won't play the same obviously uh role in the in the offense and it just helps out caleb williams like fair and square this is a good selection, and you're not going to get a Malik Neighbors type of receiver at nine. I just don't think that that's the uh, the process for the Bears here. So the the trade up to get Malik Neighbors, I don't think it's bad at all. And it's going to be Romo Dunze for me and the Giants here. It just makes sense. Jermaine Illuminor or whatever. They got an offensive tackle, kind of takes that out of question here another trade down spot and if a quarterback falls sure or maybe even a trade up spot here for the giants to uh i guess seize an opportunity and you know trade up to three or four or whenever the soonest is that they can get a franchise quarterback that isn't you know jj mccarthy i don't think he's six overall worthy and i don't think bonix and michael Penix moves the uh the needle enough who knows what we'll do in the second round here but for the first round pick six uh romo dunze solidifies a need pretty easily he's a big body receiver something they are very uh you know shallow in in the new york giants receiving room they have isaiah hodgins and i don't even know if he's still under contract i would assume so and he's probably your your biggest best guy so whatever i'm going with the roma dunze pick here great player good jump ball great athleticism and i think uh he's got the right mentality so i would really like this if i were the giants and again later in this draft you can supplement a few things maybe support this pick maybe you know pick offensive line there if they need help on the interior like there's there's different ways you can go about this pick and who knows at six overall there actually may be a quarterback that drops or even if uh the cardinals want to move out at four there are plenty of opportunities and what ifs for the new york giants in this draft and this is where it gets really interesting for the giants is like the multiple different situations you can talk down or you could sit down and talk about it uh for a long time i think the giants can go uh, multiple different ways they can go down every avenue they want and it's joe alt for me for the tennessee titans a solid player uh, good floor massive human being and he'll come in and just solidify an offensive line spot now again this is a team that could take a weapon but with neighbors and roma dunze the last two picks off the board gone joe alt probably just prevails the best talent you're trying to develop a young quarterback i have no problem defending his blind side you got peter skaronsky and joe alt on the same side aaron brewers now out at center i don't can't remember if they've done anything to solidify their center spot but even if they haven't i think that they can still invest some future draft capital in there uh, and whatever right you're you're getting a blindside protector for a quarterback named will levis that you know might need it a little bit heading into his second year we're getting fun and going dallas turner obviously no more need for quarterback i'm not going to take brock bowers here i'm just going to go with the best edge rusher and that to me is dallas turner at the spot not only is he like the most traitsy guy you hear but I think that, you know, just upside, I guess, you know, athlete things he does well. I think he actually has a pretty well-rounded game right now where I think he's actually better in the run than Jared Verse. Now, that might be a hot take, but it, don't at me. <laughs> but Dallas Turner could definitely be a longtime pillar on that defense for sure. Something you build around, someone you build uh, the team around and for and 
he's a type of talent you don't just miss out on a another possible trade down spot if the uh the jets want to you know get up for Olu Fashanu or Fashanu and anyone else they want to move up minnesota solidifying a spot getting in front of everybody else for a quarterback denver las vegas everyone can move up not everyone's like suited for a trade and so I'm not just going to get ridiculous and trade every pick. Jets going Brock Bauer, not Jets, the Chargers going Brock Bowers. And I don't know why it's so framey all of a sudden, but okay. Anywho, Brock Bowers, Georgia tight end, really solid, maybe a little undersized, but it doesn't really matter with the way he plays. I don't think it affects his blocking real, like a whole lot. I think he's got all the power. I just think he needs to work on his technique a little bit. And there are little things that you can kind of poke in, in Brock Bowers games, but, or in his game in general. But the games I watched, Brock Bowers definitely looked like the one out, far out, far lead, the fairly the best, easily the best, the the top tier, the out of this world. Like, he looked really good. To the rest of this tight end class, he looked really, really good. And I don't think that we'll see uh, anyone higher in the tight end group than uh, Brock Bowers. Because I just, you know, not even in the first round, I would say. Brock Bowers is like the only one that is a first round pick like pretty unanimously i don't think many people are having J jatavian sanders in the uh the first round so i i don't i don't know we're going olu fashionu at number 10 for the new york jets and i just did this whole pick and realized my recording was paused because i was trying to fix something anyways fashionu comes in and he's actually pretty inexperienced with football and i could see the want for maybe a talise fuwanga at this spot after you know you hear these smoke screens or possible smoke screens that the gm likes to leave safe wonga more than fashionu but no i'm not going with that i'm gonna go with what does the nfl value at tackle obviously he's got good feet he gets out and he's really good at pass pro and again he's inexperienced so it's really good actually considering how much he he currently how good he is currently and how much he doesn't know that he can get better at the ceiling you could pile things onto fashionu and you can kind of add to the the case that he's the higher ceiling player but even currently, I think he's just as good, if not better, in pass pro. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to win now. That's kind of the window you're in. Your Super Bowl window with Aaron Rodgers, and you're trying to protect him. And Fashionu and Talise Fuwonga, not far off on the uh, the old you know numbers game with pass pro. So I think it's just fine having Fashionu there with the much higher ceiling than you're getting with Talise Fuwonga, even though you're probably getting more solid in the run game right away so it, it kind of you can flip it both ways and i'm sure people will have their opinions here when the actual draft comes around it just again fashion he's had such a, a bad pre-draft process even though he personally hasn't it's been the media that's really trashed him and kind of you know he's the consensus number one for all year then the the college season ends and all of a sudden it's joe alt tackle one this pre-draft process we've seen tali say fulonga do great things maybe that raises him over fashion and it kind of goes and goes and goes. But I think once we get back to the uh, the actual NFL draft, when it's all said and done, I think it's going to be kind of close. But it's also going to be fashion to the NFL. It just makes a lot more sense between what we've seen, you know, through past drafts with offensive tackles. I think fashion is just much more, you know, suited into that, uh, I guess, much more. Yeah, I guess suited for the NFL with the traits and upside. We're going Jage McCarthy here, JJ out of Michigan, and he will be Sam Darnold's backup for year one. That's kind of the, the mindset taking this pick. I don't know. Can you just take Quinion Mitchell here and be okay with it? Sure. Could you trade down? Sure. I think McCarthy and O'Connell would be a phenomenal pairing. And if O'Connell you know, likes the tape of McCarthy. I don't think that he'd be shy at all at this spot. I think Bonix is well in play in this area too, in this range. He, and who knows where the NFL teams individually sit on these players. I think if McCarthy's high on Minnesota's board, I think it's a good pick. He comes in. I don't want him starting day one. I want that to be clear. I don't think he should be. He should not be thrown into the fire like that. It can do a lot to hurt him. And I don't think that's the, the, the way you want to start mccarthy's career is um you know ironing out the bad for the first two years i think you you sit him behind i know it's kind of crazy sam darnold goes out there it's not pretty by any means but you you put sam darnold out there i don't think he's atrocious like people kind of paint him out to be i understand he's not great but i will i will be forever be on the sam darnold train ever since i uh drafted him in one of my dynasty leagues a long time ago that all being said favoritism behind i or aside I think McCarthy has to be 
the second guy to Sam Darnold to at least start with. And if Sam Darnold gets bad enough and you like McCarthy and you, you are reassured that he will have no negative effect, there will be nothing bad that kind of falls onto his shoulders as he starts in the league, then sure. Maybe, maybe that's the, the move at week six to eight range when you're trying to get some momentum swing in. If you're like a, a, you know, three and four team, but you really think you can do it. You just need a spark and Sam Darnold's really not doing it for you. Maybe McCarthy pushes you over and maybe you rely on a run game, which right now looks like Ty Chandler and Aaron Jones, who to me, I mean, they're kind of similar players, but you just can't pass up Aaron Jones and I'm a Packers fan and that really sucks and I hate it, but it's whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah it's, um, I hate it. Back to back quarterbacks. We're going Bo Nix for the Denver Broncos and a lot of bees in that, but Bo Nix, a lot of people aren't this high on him. I think Chris Sims is the only one I've seen as high or higher than me with Bo Nix. I think that ever since my first, you know, five games tape evaluation, first glance sort of thing with these guys, Bo Nix has easily been the, uh, my guy. I, I don't know how people aren't so high on him. He does a lot of things really well. I think the floor is very well suited for the league and this past uh, two years in Oregon, with the way that he's kind of taking control of that system. I really like Bo Nix and you can kind of go through and look around and say the, uh, the overall consensus through the media isn't high on him. I don't care, man. I'm taking Bo Nix. I I'm no regrets. I'm just going to go 12 Denver Bo Nix. If you don't like it, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll try to get around to, to responding to that. If it's uh, worth my time, because a lot of people like to just, it, it's annoying. Let's say, and whatever. Denver, Bo Nix, good pairing to me, and I think Sean Payton would be more than happy with a guy like Bo Nix. And I was saying earlier with Jaden Daniels and how his arm might be romanticized. I don't think Bo Nix has talked about uh, enough or as I as good as it is. Bo Nix's arm, people need to be higher on him. I'm just straight up saying, telling you to be higher on Bo Nix because it's going to happen. He's going. He's going in the top 15. I'm not going to guarantee anything. I'm not doing any bets or anything like that, but... I like my Bonex. Felice Fulwonga here for the uh, Raiders, and they lost Jermaine Eleanor, and they have Colton Miller on the other side. So right tackle slots right in with Fulwonga. He's got the Antonio Pierce mentality, I think, of just loving football, going out there, decimating guys. I don't see a problem with that at all. And when you really look at who's left, especially at quarterback, you're you know, a little hesitant with Michael Penix Jr. I could see that. I mean, you can go down this board here, which for some reason is being slow. I hate it, but okay. Uh, tell me who else makes, you know, more sense than Fuwanga other than these two corners and no one else really makes sense. And I think that if they do enough, I think they lost like Amik Robertson and they haven't really done a whole lot with their corner group, but I wouldn't pass up Fuwanga, who is arguably being talked about as a top 10 talent in this class. Someone that has kind of shuffled down to you or shuffle or been shuffled to the point where he's fallen into your arms. And I think that the corner class is good enough. I guess if you, if you want depth later, whatever you can go ahead, you could do all that plays scenarios, everything's in play here. And Fuaga or Fuanga just came out victorious for me at 13 for the, uh, the Raiders. We're going Troy Faltanu for the Saints, number 14 overall. Yes, he's the left tackle, and Ryan Ramchek's really the biggest question mark right now. But if he ends up coming back, leave Faltanu left side, who where he'd be playing over Anduris Pete and Trevor Penning right now. And then Ramchek comes back and he's playing right tackle. And I think that Faltanu can play tackle he's been talked about as a guard a lot and then when i started watching film on the offensive line and i far from expertise or my expertise are far from good when it comes to evaluating offensive linemen i just didn't see the the whole guard conversation when i started watching him he comes out he measures well his arms are are long enough to profile as a tackle and i think that's just ultimately where you put him and then you can shuffle him in guard if it doesn't really or sh shuffle him inside if it doesn't work out at tackle Fatano gives you a lot of, um, I guess, different ways you can go about the way you're shuffling an offensive line as much as it does like availability. And I think you're just getting a shirt of good player. Great movement. He moves like a freaking tight end. It was crazy at the combine. Then you guys watch that and know what I'm talking about. Faton is an athlete for days. Gwynion Mitchell, the pick for me for the Indianapolis Colts. And it's just as simple as they need corner help. They did re-sign Kenny Moore. And also, you know, Juju Brents is on the team and you can kind of go down. But their secondary is not that great. I think that they could use safety, especially with the loss of Julian Blackman, who 
they might have actually re-signed by now, but I don't know because I haven't looked. Unprofessional of me. But yeah, Quinion Mitchell just goes in, solidifies a secondary need, and maybe Kenny uh, Moore moves to Nickel, Quinion on one side, and Juju Brents on the other. I think that would be kind of the best way to line it up. And then you have your your linebackers, Zaire Franklin there, uh, maybe dropped one, maybe... I can't remember. I thought they signed another one, but maybe not. Maybe it's EJ Speed playing into that second linebacker spot. And then... Maybe uh, replace some safeties. <laughs> I don't think uh, Rodney Thomas or whatever or Nick Cross can really take over and really be that safety one or what Julian Blackman was supposed to be. There's like a list that you could go with for Indianapolis, but Quinion Mitchell to me made a lot more sense than, I mean, Terry on Arnold is up on a lot of people's boards and these corners are starting to kind of fall along, you know, the edge rushers, Byron Murphy might be, you know, expected to be gone by now. So I don't know, honestly, where they're going with this pick, but Quinion Mitchell just makes a whole lot of sense for me personally. I've seen it before. Corner seems to be a pop popular trend with the Colts, and I'm just sticking to it. Just talked about him. We're going Byron Murphy, and I could see the want for Powers Johnson or anything like that. I've just done that often. I think, you know, you'd rather switch it up. I know they got back uh, Big Cat, Leonard Williams. And that's not a problem, but, you know, name one other guy that has, like, true size on the inside other than Jared Reed, who I think actually might be gone. And it's just, like, Draymond Jones, he's kind of a tweener. And this, the way that you look at that off or the defensive line, Boye Mafe, Ochana Nuosu, Darrell Taylor, your edge rushing rotation, and if you want to, you know, make your additions, you can on the, on the interior, you're kind of already hit on that. And I think Byron Murphy just significantly improves that side of the, the defense, or I guess the, uh, the trenches on the defensive side. So the Texas uh you know primary pass rusher actually he primaries and pass rush over run that's kind of why I'd, I'd call him the pass rush specialist the uh interior defensive lineman to seattle at 16. darion arnold for me alabama's corner going to jacksonville they lose darius williams and i can't remember I mean, tyson campbell's there but i think they have like Pondriac brown or something i can't remember but Terry and Arnold is just a significant upgrade. They need upgrades elsewhere on the defense, and their offense did get solidified. I think it's Mitch Morse playing center for them now. Ezra Cleveland did a good job, or they did a good job with his uh, contract extension early, so you're not spending a buttload of money on guard. The offensive line looks a lot better than anything I would have gone with here. I think Jackson Powers Johnson's still like kind of in play, but to me, if Terry and Arnold's on the board, I don't think you're, you're just going to say, whatever we need offensive line. I, think, I, I think that i know as much as you want to might you might want to protect uh trevor lawrence i i just don't think you pass up on terry on arnold jc latham for the Bengals now and i know some people might have you know a bone to pick with me i know brian thomas is still on the board but i'm a huge fan of brian thomas so technically i don't want to be grilled for it i'm just gonna say that brian thomas is a very good player I just uh, I couldn't find a suitor for him. So J.C. Latham, they lose Jonah Williams. He officially went elsewhere. I think he's getting paid like $15 million a year. Ridiculous. Uh, anywho, might actually be the Raiders. Did the Raiders sign him? I, I don't know. Anywho, um, J.C. Latham, powerful, great big man playing tackle for you on the right side. Hopefully better than what you've had. And I know it's not Burrow's blind side, but it helps. I mean, offensive line in general just helps. I mean, Burrow's had, you know, problems staying healthy. But there is some, like, talk going on that, well, after this, after this one, he's done. And after this one, he's done. And hopefully that is the case. A lot of these just have been, you know, labeled as bad luck injuries. But who knows? Uh, JC Latham just goes and solidifies the right spot on your offensive line at right tackle. And uh, just moving on. Nate Wiggins. I think the NFL is pretty high on him. So I feel kind of comfortable taking him here. He's an extreme lightweight. Moves like no other and actually hurt himself at the combine. So that might hurt his draft stock a little bit. And he's coming down here at 19. People believe he's like the best corner in the draft. And I'm not saying like I'm not on the same wavelength. I'm just not quite there on, on him. I'm not saying like that's impossible. I would never like, you know. There are things to like, and I think um, his 40 time is obviously one. I think it was a pulled hamstring or groin, and he still ran a 4 to 8. So I like uh, Nate Wiggins, what he offers. And again, he's like a lightweight. And Cardinals, they just need defensive, uh, you know, even secondary. I'd say secondary in general. As a whole, they need players on the back end of their defense. 
And that's why we're going Nate Wiggins here at 19. Amarius Mims at this spot for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we are going with Broderick Jones and Amarius Mims. And Mims, fun fact about him, he went actually 60-40 over practices this year. 60% of them at right tackle and 40% of them at left tackle is what he said. Now you can obviously say that to, to boost your draft stock at the combine when you meet with teams and then you go in and you look like trash on the left side. But I actually believe him. If he's saying that, even if it's 30, you know, 70, I think it's not bad at all. I think Amarius Mims, he can play the left side. Broderick Jones, he looked fine on the right side. If you want to move him to left side, like you can kind of just see who looks better at the on the left side and just put whoever isn't on the right side. I think you'd be just fine, but the Georgia Tack will do it back together again in Pittsburgh. And they've got themselves a replacement for Dan Moore, who hasn't been playing great. And I think uh, for whoever uh, Russell Wilson, you know, obviously I was going to say whoever their quarterback is, but we know it's Russell Wilson now, would be very thankful for these uh, these monsters on <laughs> the, uh, the outside of his offensive line. Jackson Powers Johnson to Miami. They need interior offensive linemen. I think Powers Johnson's a great uh, player i think he'll be pretty good right away and throughout his nfl career i'm not gonna call him like a blue chipper maybe when it's all like maybe after final evaluate valuations he'll be what i'm looking at to be labeled a blue chip prospect which means like you really can't miss he's gonna be great and that you just take him as is and powers johnson might end up in that category for me but who knows Powers Johnson is a, uh, a good player. He's going to play on the interior again. He's got that guard center versatility. So wherever you feel more comfortable with him, if you are the uh, Dolphins, I guess, go with uh, Powers Johnson. Just put him where you feel needed or where he feels or where you feel he helps the most or where he'd be most needed. Blah, 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 blah. All the same thing. Brian Thomas Jr. I click the button and there it finally goes. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Uh, maybe I'm running my computer into the ground or something. I don't know what's going on, but. Brian Thomas Jr., 22 overall to the Eagles. I guarantee you guys haven't seen this, and especially after the Devontae Parker signing, you kind of question it, but still, A.J. Brown, uh, there's some injury concerns. Devontae Smith, pretty small guy, and I understand they're both kind of deep threats in a sense, but it's just because they're really good receivers. Devontae Parker's like a, a contested catch guy. Brian Thomas is a field stretcher straight up with size, I think that would help uh, Jalen Hurts and actually their run game. Brian Thomas is a pretty good blocker, and I like him in this offense. I don't see the reason where it wouldn't, you know, how it couldn't go this way. People can't just rule this out. I know Eagles fans are very passionate on who they want me to draft, and I get comments from them all the time, and it's mostly just because, you know, I don't draft. We're not drafting, blah, blah, blah. I know that for a fact, and it's it's different every year with them, but... They do like their trenches in the first round. I do get that. But Brian Thomas Jr. at 22, tell me about a bargain. And I was even looking for a team to trade up for him. And I was thinking like Buffalo could. I'm kind of surprised I didn't actually pull the trigger on that now that I'm thinking about it. But anyways, or anyways, uh, Brian Thomas Jr. off the board at 22. Good player, dynamic, uh, gets downfield. He might be looked at as a more one-sided receiver as just a deep threat. But I think he does more than that. Jerzon Newton for the Houston Texans at the 23rd overall pick defensive interior kind of the the one spot they haven't added significant resource to over this uh off season and free agency process so far and so we'll see you know obviously daniel hunter a new addition will anderson a new addition they've got jeff okuda steven nelson i think steven nelson's back Derek stingley jr add Drazon newton to that and alongside you know petrie who was playing really good at safety jimmy ward's gone i don't know who takes the other safety spot can't remember so they've got themselves a pretty solidified defense as he's al shire comes from uh tennessee and where he was actually originally from and drafted to the san francisco 49ers with D'Amico ryan's reunites with the Texans, and there's just going to be some good synergy on this team, and Jason Newton only adds to that. And I do, I do think that this pick, or I guess with the additions they've made in free agency, it should open up this pick here for an offensive player. I think offensive line is something they can go with. I think there are options on the offensive side of the ball that the Texans could use for sure. But Jason Newton just stuck out to me, and I was like, okay, well, how many resources have they put towards defense? So why wouldn't they keep that? That foot on the pedal, keep aggression going that way, and take Tristan Newton. It's going to be Tyler Guyton for the Dallas Cowboys for me at 24. I think, um, yeah, you look at their depth chart and you understand why. I know that Tyron Smith has actually left. Tyler Smith's still there and might want to stay at guard as he is probably one of the better, if not the best, left guard in the game. Zach Martin, be it as, is gone. So maybe, you know, Graham Barton's in play here. But Tyler Guyton, left tackle. 
And if he doesn't work out there, right tackle, whatever, Terrence Steele's plan, I mean, it's it's all right. You can do some different things. You just need a tackle. Tyler Guyton's going to be there. Oklahoma moves really well on his feet, and I think um, Dallas Cowboys with the stale free agency process, to say the least, and they're still going to stay a little stagnant and not make the exciting pick at 24. Graham Barton for the pack and my Packers and finally goes through. Um, <laughs> just going to wait for my computer to catch up real quick. Brian, uh, Brian Gary, Graham Barton figured it out eventually at 25. So the Green Bay Packers comes in. He'll play interior offensive line. I think left or right guard. Is it left guard that... um. I think we have Sean Ryan and Josh Myers set up to be a right guard and our center. And I'd rather have Barton play center or right guard over Josh Myers or Sean Ryan. And that's kind of just where I stand. Barton would come in. He's got a nasty demeanor to him as well that I think would really translate well to the inside in the uh, NFL. And it might not be as emphasized in the NFL as it was in the college or in college ranks. Obviously, differences there. <laughs> and Barton just overall be a fun pick i think um there could be like corner you want to you know to address corner i don't care right now i'm gonna be honest and i'm just gonna go with graham barton jared versus fall or i guess his fall stops here the drop stops the drop stops here I'm, I'm gonna do that one it sounds the best jared versus off the board here more of a power player got some juice off the edge he's got some real get up and he's got himself um a very nicely i guess how, how do i say this without seeming a little you know weird about it he's built himself a great stature since he's gotten to florida state and he's worked hard and it kind of shows so jared verse at 26 tampa bay absolutely amazing on the other side of an athletic guy like diaby or whoever else they end up lining up on the other side there and there are things you obviously can do and open up your playbook a little bit more stunts everything like that i think versus got the juice along with yaya but first kind of brings more of that power dimension to your game you just can't miss on a guy like Latu at 27. It's not going to happen. I can understand the want here for Cooper DeGene for a receiver, Darius Robinson, whatever. I'm going to Latu. Latu, I think uh, just way too good and polished to sit here and say he's not going to be a first-round pick, and let alone top you know, 27 pick. We're seeing it right now. I think that he should you know, even be in the, the possibilities for like the Bears even at 9 if they pay, uh you know stick and pick and obviously probably not anymore you're probably looking at more of that top like i think minnesota it starts for layatu latu but and the fact that he's made it this far is nothing but a miracle for the arizona cardinals he's very polished very good with his hands he's really good with his mind as well coming in with a pass rush plan every single snap playing every snap like it's his last because he has had football taken away from him once and he's not gonna let it happen again he was medically retired at the university of washington transfers over to ucla and balls out no question and he's going to be the pick for me at 27 adnai mitchell for the buffalo bills and the bills mafia i think you're happy with this but you could have been happier trading up getting like brian thomas or something could have been fun and really adds another dimension to your offense i think deontay hardy's gone i don't think you really have i mean clear shakir is good but I don't think he's like the guy that gets down the field. I think Stefan Diggs is just your all around veteran receiver now. He's kind of, you know, there's some character concerns there. It seems like there's a lot of people that are skeptical with his mentality and how in it he is for the Buffalo Bills, how frustrated he gets after every game. And who knows? And Adonai Mitchell probably won't help that. He's not a very high, um, I, I'd say his character shows on the field a lot. And, and th that's a nice way to put it. I, I, not a fan of uh, the things you see here and there with Mitchell, but it's okay. I think he's still a phenomenal player, fluid, and obviously a great athlete for such great size. I think like 6'4 is a good height, and he can stretch the field as well, and he's not far off Brian Thomas. I just think that he's a little bit, um, a little bit different, and I think Thomas is a better athlete overall, where Mitchell kind of pieces things together little by little all the way around his game, and I think that uh, if he hits, he can be one of the better receivers in this draft class. We couldn't be looking back and, you know, taking it twice or looking at whatever, whatever, checking it twice. There we go. Found the, found the words, finally. I'm tired for, for whatever reason, if you guys couldn't tell. Another miracle pick. We're going Cooper to Jean at 29 for the Detroit Lions. And again, miracle pick. I don't I don't even think he's going to make it to this spot. But if he does, Detroit sprints to the podium and they're going to put that one in. I know they have had secondary help now trading for 
a cornerback to pair with Cam Sutton, bringing back Emmanuel Mosley. I forgot the corner they traded for. It was not Dante Jackson. I think he's Pittsburgh now or something. I can't. So hard to look through all these guys and like remember what every transaction and do all that. So Cooper DeGene, 29 out of Iowa. He's a versatile guy. I'd list him as a DB, not necessarily just a boundary corner. He can come in. He can play the nickel. He can play safety over top. He can play in the box and I think that he can still be very well suited to sit at a boundary corner, even though he is white, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out. Kool-Aid McKinstry for the Baltimore Ravens, and I think that his whole situation's gotten kind of crazy, by the way. People head in, they're like, oh, we love Chris. All right, not Christian. Kool-Aid McKinstry. We like him. We we really do. He seems to be cornerback one heading in, and some are scouting. Obviously, a lot of people were good on McKinstry and then as we get through the season he kind of uh, uh, drops 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 and um yeah we're to the point where people are saying he's not a first rounder where he might lack in athleticism I don't I don't like that because it just feels like you're just trying to be different you're trying to do your own little thing here and to be honest I don't see I like the physicality he he flashes good bursts maybe off man is where he lives press he's really good though but if he has a lack of athleticism, people are worried about at the next level. Sure, just put him an off man. Still, you know, playing him up. Like, whatever. I, I really don't care. I can't be bothered. And there's not a tackle I'd have uh, going to the spot here. So instead, I'm just going to go with Kool-Aid McKinstry. Call it a day for the Baltimore Ravens. And in the end of the day, he might go even higher than this. And who knows? He might even be a second round player just due to athletic concerns is what I'm hearing from him right now, which is kind of you know, weird. Uh, Mari Lasseter for the San Francisco 49ers. And again, just waiting for my computer to catch up. It does such a good job at that. Anywho, Mari Lasseter, Georgia corner, a little bit more calculated. He has gotten beat, you know, every here and there going from like the middle to out. So maybe he needs to work on that a little bit. And good news for him, he'd be, uh, be behind Traverius Ward, Diamador Lenore, and really wouldn't be forced into a significant role right away. Where some of these guys are and i think you're still getting the first year draft or first round draft capital on him to, and getting that fifth year option corners might take a little bit longer to catch their stride in the nfl kamari lassiter i mean i i like the the fire he plays with he's really good with that and i think overall when you watch kamari lassiter something kind of stands out was obviously like i said a little bit more conservative smart thought out type of corner and that's what the the 49ers need and hopefully he doesn't commit as many penalties as the train wreck they have there now there's somewhere you can look at and it's like okay there should have been like five more calls for for pi for the 49ers but it just wasn't really you know shouted out or anything on the uh the broadcast or, or anything like that so yeah kamari last 31 eon coleman for the kansas city chiefs the florida state wide receiver will come out of florida state and he's a physical specimen i'd say but i wouldn't say he's got the athletic testing on his side he plays really fast i know that but he ran a four six five, kind of you know hits a dent into into his bumper if you will i don't know where i was going with that analogy but yeah keon coleman jump ball guy athlete he actually returns kicks he's actually surprisingly great after the catch he's got some pretty good cuts here and there i, I like keon coleman not on the uh you know I, I would love to put xavier worthy here that'd be fun right that'd be great lad mcconkey I don't think fits, which might sound crazy, but you already have Rasheed Rice and Troy Franklin might be a possibility here, field stretcher, whatever, all that good stuff. But instead, it's just Keon Coleman for me. You know, it's just Keon Coleman. It's all Keon. And we'll start this round with Lad McConkey off the board. Do the Carolina Panthers just goes and helps? I mean, Deontay Johnson is there now too, and I think Deontay Johnson on one side, Thielen on the other mcconkey in the slot or on the other side as your wide receiver two slash slot wouldn't be a terrible role for him i do think he can play outside it just kind of depends on how well his re releases work in the nfl and we'll have to see on that obviously we don't know but mcconkey good player i think uh a pretty safe player at that so we're going with uh, sure things at 33 with lad mcconkey and if you guys haven't heard his name, it's virtually impossible. But Hall of Fame name, and he had a great pre-draft process. Ennis Rakestraw brings some football and passion to the secondary for New England. I think it's just a team that needs some of that fire, if you will, for him. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just happening. He's a physical player, good in run defense, probably the best run defending 
corner. It's close between him and DeGene. You know, you kind of go down the list. He's had actually some injury concerns. I'm glad to see he is kind of falling a little bit because I thought he was a little too high earlier when people were putting him in the 20s area. I just didn't really like that. I thought like 31 was like where the, the, the run begins on Rakestraw, but it is what it is. He's going 34, and this is still maybe even a little rich for me, but Rakestraw, the pick here out of uh, Missouri to New England, and again, just a fiery, passionate type of, type of player and was a real leader for Missouri. We have another trade. It's the New York Giants going up to 235 from the Arizona Cardinals, putting in a fourth this year and a fourth next year, and we'll see if this trade goes through. Oh, look at that, and it does happen for the New York Giants, pick number 35 now, and they're trading up for Michael Penix Jr., the uh, quarterback out of Washington. When was the last time Brian Dable had a rocket ship arm at quarterback? That's right, it was Josh Allen. So imagine that. And Michael Penix might already have a little bit more game sense in between the ears than Josh Allen did. So just imagine another mold. I'm not saying Michael Penix is Josh Allen, by the way. Don't. I just want to make that clear. Uh, Penix, he's got a lot to work on. And obviously, that's why he's being picked down this far. Maybe medicals don't come in as clean. You know, there's there's, there's reasons he could be down here. And I do think he is like a second round. People kind of uh, put him in the same class and realm as Bo Nix. And I think he's got him in a tier of his own past like the McCarthy Nix and Drake May range. Like, I, I really don't know where to stand on these guys. I haven't done my rankings yet. And we'll see when we get there. But to me, Penix makes the sense. I, I don't know why I said makes the sense. He makes sense. And he's going to be the pick at 35. If you guys want to go check out Michael Penix, I, I suggest it. I don't think Giants fans would be mad if this is your quarterback. And I don't think you'd have to rush him either. As, as old as he already is, I think he comes in at like 24. You have Daniel Jones there. I think you guys traded for someone else or, or spent some money somewhere else. I can't remember. It's been such a weird free agency, especially with quarterbacks, backups getting paid. It gets kind of bizarre, but Penix number 35 washington going jordan morgan the arizona tackle he's kind of been untalked about after getting maybe a little bit of a rise and he's kind of just stood there back end of the first early second range and people still kind of hesitant to take him in the first he's looking more like a second round guy is what it is i do like morgan he's good but i don't know how great you know i think that's the problem i haven't even watched him but people are saying he is a guard, and so you could sl uh, slip him into guard, cause me back out to tackle. Charles Leno, gone, I believe now, right? So just move some pieces, and you just get an offensive lineman. Looking at um, what we've talked about for Chargers, we're going with Xavier Worthy. The last like couple of years, we were like, Jalen Hyatt in the first round for Los Angeles, dude. Not only did it, like, it's like not one of those things that it doesn't make sense. It's They, they need the, the new thing, and then with Mike Williams being gone, they really need the new thing. So you're getting a new guy guy just a field stretcher literally just a vertical threat in my opinion i don't think he does anything else like particularly amazing or great like he does just pushing and getting downfield right quentin johnson looks to be a little bit more developmental at this point you can kind of go down the board mike williams got released keenan allen's there he's really good and mentoring these guys the right way josh palmer i don't know i think he's on a new contract extension possibly can't quite uh, put my finger on that one. But Worthy adds a, a new dimension to a Chargers offense, which what did I do for them? Now that I'm blanking, Los Angeles Chargers, or yeah, Los Angeles Chargers, what did I do? That's right, I went Brock Bowers. That would be an amazing draft haul for them. Oh my goodness, think about that. Tennessee, same story. That's why we're going Troy Franklin, another guy that can just get downfield. He actually wasn't impressive at the combine at all. I think he actually had kind of a stinker, and that's why he's pushed down the board for me quite a bit here at 38. But all things considered, I like the tape, and I'm going to trust that. And so we're going to go with him at 38. I think he is still like a top 35 guy. I think he has the possibility to still be that first rounder. But for the Tennessee Titans, I think like right now, you look at their receiving room. It's There's no, again, pizzazz to it. There's like nothing like that. I know D Hop. I know Traylon Burks. They had Chris Moore playing some snaps last year. Kyle Phillips, a slot guy primarily. But Franklin there, he just gives you something he does or that you don't have, and he's got extra juice. And I like that uh that trial error process that you had with Traylon Burks and you learn from his profile. And maybe you go the complete opposite here with Troy Franklin. Darius Robinson, I think you're doing a good job just picking not best player available. I think that's actually Zach Frazier at this spot. Darius Robinson, how bad is he? Like, he could play interior, exterior. You lose Brian Burns. Your two gross Matos is gone. Derek Brown, 
is uh, still very good. And you're just like at a lack and maybe sick of how your team has kind of played out. So get a fun player that had some true buzz actually going on about him around the senior bowl. Combine was not good, but I didn't expect it to be. He looks like he looks really good. And sure, I didn't think he'd be like that bad athletically, but he's got himself like a great stature. I've never seen someone hold like 280 that well. He looks really good. He can play again, both interior, exterior. He's got some versatility there and maybe lacks a little bit of that uh you know top tier burst out of the stance whatever you want to say robinson's still a great player and i'm not shying away from that other edge rusher i'm still a huge fan of it's braylon trice his motor runs hot all the time runs right through the whistle braylon trice is amazing and i he weighed in so weird i thought he'd be 265 and he's like at 240 something he doesn't even you know it, he doesn't even stand out at the combine it was really weird but I'm still believing, again, in the talent, the tape, the player, the, the personality, the mentality, all that good stuff. Braylon Trice, Washington, Edge Rusher, off the board for me, Washington Commanders, at number 40. Weird, again, weird player, weird process he's having as of late. Where to stand on him right now, but he's going 40 to me. Or 40 for me. My bad. One of my favorite players and actually made my top 25, Braden Fisk. I know it's crazy. He made my top 25. He's going 40. How hypocritical are you? Or how bad are you? Whatever. Shit. How is this... Oh my god. All right. Well, this was supposed to be Tyler Newbin, actually. So the next picks. So we'll, we'll kind of just combine the two. So Tyler Newbin, safety to the Green Bay Packers. I think Anthony Johnson and uh, Xavier McKinney, they're good players. And I don't know how long my hair's been messed up, but that's cool. Um, okay. Tyler Newbin pairs up well with Xavier McKinney. One plays strong, one plays free. Anthony Johnson's currently slated to play one of the starting safety spots. I think he's a good nickel. And then you got Carrington Valentine, Eric Stokes, Jair Alexander, and we got we have another corner in there somewhere, I think. From what I remember. You got those three guys on the boundary to corner, or Anthony Johnson come down, play the box, play safety, play um you know the the nickel and also uh bring in tyler newbin who this is supposed to be who i'll get up on the board real quick just so we we know so you bring in tyler newbin and he does a good job and then for the minnesota side of things brady braden fisk yeah braden fisk top 25 player for me he comes in he's a lot different than harrison phillips and people you know what take to Vondre sweat take to like to Vondre, sure but he's very similar to, to Harrison Phillips. Phillips played a lot of uh, just nose tackle last year. Really, really high snap rate. Or really, like, just took a lot of snaps. And he's, like, a true guy on the inside. So, you could use some interior pass rush now that you have Grenard. I don't know if they have another. Oh, Andrew Van Ginkle. <laughs> That's funny. Brayden Fisk on the interior with alongside Harrison Phillips. Like you're just building yourself and building some resources and players pieces on that defense, I guess. Back up since uh, you're a little bit depleted. Ricky Pearsall here, the Florida receiver. And I forgot who they brought in. It was, oh, it was right there on the top of my top. Anyway, they have Drake London and then they brought in Darnell Money. And I think Pearsall is a different player from both of them. So it's okay. Pearsall be that number three and you're getting that at 43 is amazing. Like Pearsall is a great player and arguably a borderline first round. People have done it. I see the first round or for the first pick of the second round a lot for him with the where we took Ladd McConkey for the Panthers. I've seen Pearsall's name there more and more as we get uh, further past the, the senior bowl and combine, which he actually did a really good job of. And uh, one of the best catches in college football. Everyone knows that, or even maybe college football history. Ricky Pearsall, good player. Um, Polish looks really good at separating, catching, fluid, all that. And um, again, just probably comes in as a three, so you're not playing Van Jefferson, Kadero Hodge again. Who knows who they would have found to step up there. Maybe Scotty Miller. One of the lowest spots I've had TJ Tampa going, and it's 44 to the Las Vegas Raiders. And I'm not ashamed or anything. I'm not shying away from my word or any of that but i like tj tampa a lot and to get him here at 44 i think the cards have fallen the right way the right uh you know i think the right things have happened and the raiders are getting a good boundary player that has some of that mentality again we talk about it and you know there's kind of a theme with the raiders team that you can look at and be you know obviously max crosby looks like to be like the poster child of that sort of mentality now but Tampa, he comes off the edge as a corner, believe it or not. And he's got true size. He's he's physical and he's good at tracking in the run. And not only that, he's got good uh coverage ability, but I can't wait to dive into more of TJ Tampa because he is still a little bit of an unknown for me. So can't wait to kind of get there. And then um 
I, I just like what he brings in terms of what you don't have there. I guess you're kind of just filling a need as well. Wide receiver Roman Wilson to the New Orleans Saints, and he will be off the board. Now, you only have Chris Olave left practically at perry if you think he's amazing special like some people out there do i don't think he's ready to be a full time number two or what do they call it like a flanker or something like that and i think that i like roman wilson to come in and step up play a role in this offense especially if Derek carr i mean we've seen him work with guys like hunter renfro before and it could be the same sort of uh, situation here. By the way, Hunter Renfro released. Look for him to be signed by the Saints if he isn't already signed by the time this comes out. That would be a fun fit now that I'm thinking about it. But Roman Wilson, a similar type player, plays in the slot, shifty, nice track athlete, but didn't really come out at the, the combine and look really good. A little bit on the smaller side again, but uh, good production at Michigan. Not like top in the country or anything. But for his role, he was pretty good and really reliable there. And I started to like him a little bit towards the tail end of the season. I was watching a couple of J.J. McCarthy games to, to get first impressions. And he stuck out to me quite a bit. And I was like, okay, I mean, he looks he looks good. And then it just got a little bit better. The name started coming up more. And he just was really reliable. Had a nice senior bowl that kind of shot him up boards initially. And I think he's done a good job maintaining his draft stock and sticking, obviously, here at uh, 45. But his range could start same place we kind of talked about. I think he's he's this is the right range for him. I'll put it that way for me. I think this is the right range and where I'd expect him to go in the NFL draft somewhere slightly middle of the second round, you know, give or take a few picks. Chop Robinson, Indianapolis getting themselves a athletic pass rusher and kind of the only way he wins is his athleticism right now. He's not real polished and he'll need to work on that and can't find a better spot with more um I guess veterans than Indianapolis right now. And I think it's a good pairing. So I'm just going to do it right here. Got 46 chop Robinson, the fall stops and people might not even see this as a fall. And that just kind of, you know, pops up Zach Frazier for the Arizona Cardinals. They trade back and they still get a phenomenal player. He can play guard or center wherever you need him. I probably just play him at center. He's a pretty good player all the way around. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know anything like special about him. Haven't done a whole lot of scouting on these offensive linemen, especially on the interior. So Frazier, he's good, very well polished, well rounded. I think he'll be a good player at the next level right away. And I don't think he carries a very high ceiling as much as he does carry a a, a solid floor and looks to be a good NFL player right away and then improve slightly. Uh, I, I shouldn't say slightly. I'm never going to put a cap on someone like that, but. Just it looks to improve on small little things and nuance and kind of build while he's in the NFL. Devondre sweat off the board for the, uh, not the Chargers. This would be the Jaguars at pick number 48, getting Devondre sweat. And I was looking over the roster or the depth chart or whatever. And I don't know if I missed anything or I literally just didn't see size. I think Roy Robertson Harris after like Devon Hamilton's gone, I think, or something like that. Maybe Devon Hamilton is there and he's like still like three or five. Get Devondre Sweat, put him right there in the middle and say, hey, go forklift the center and then get your arms around the two guards, wrap them all together, tie their arms up, and we have a free lane to the, the pass, or to the passer, I guess, yeah, but Devondre Sweat, freaky size, man. He's so good, and he's such a good football player, then why is he going so late in the draft? You have to accept the fact that he's not going to play every snap, or even close to every snap, and that is a little bit of a, a dent or a chink in the armor for Devondre, as he's not very well... Uh, conditioned I guess you could say and no one really is at 365 or whatever he is he's ridiculously big and I think that he's an asset I think he's a game changer on certain downs certain um dimension I think he's better as a pass rusher than people like to take to, to uh I guess profile mez or talk about so Tavondre Sweat at 48 the pick for me Chris Jenkins the uh defensive lineman getting picked back to back here Tavondre then Chris Jenkins they just need help on the interior of that defensive line people are kind of begging right now for free agents I've seen a couple posts from uh Cincinnati Bang Bengals fans Bengi fans that they want a interior defensive lineman after the loss. I think DJ reader has gone or he might just be injured, but BJ Hills there. And I think they got like J two Fele or whatever. He's there. That's cool. I'm not saying he's terrible, but yeah, get Chris Jenkins in there. He's a good player. And I think he'd be a, a impactful player right away. And you're getting that at 49. I think that's a good, you know, not a blooper, but that's a good way to go about your draft. And if, you know, a player as good as Jenkins is here, I think it's it's great value. And again, he does, he, I guess, would make an instant impact, which you're looking for at 50 anyways. Mikey Sainra still out of Michigan, going back-to-back -back Michigan players. And 
surprisingly, none of these teams are the Chargers with uh, Jim Harbaugh. But Sainer still nickel corner all the way. He's really good. And I think the question is just how high do you take a nickel corner? But a guy like Sainer still, you just got to take him high. He's really good. I know I mentioned that five times already, but he is good. It's just like the best way to put it. Sainer still very well rounded, vicious leader of men. I'll tell you that. But he's, he lacks a little bit of size and he profiles best in the slot. And he's really good at that and was really good at Michigan. And the way that uh, he kind of fly around the field and make the plays and looking at Philly's current situation and then them missing out on corner in the first round because Brian Thomas, the talent he is, falls to him. You can do a lot here. So Sainer still, Michigan uh, corner, uh, nickel, I guess, off the board at 50. Jalen Polk, the wide receiver out of Washington, throw it in his range and he'll do his best to go up and get it and get it 70% of the time. It's pretty much as good as it gets at, um, or not as good as it gets. It's pretty much as Pittsburgh Steeler as it gets, to put it that way when it comes to effort. And I like Polk. I, I don't see the, um, people have him really high and I'm not there, but this is still high. Uh, borderline top 50 in a draft is pretty good. And Polk might just go around in this area. It might not just be looked at as high from some people. And that kind of, uh, I guess, holds consensus down. But I've heard some crazy takes about Jalen Polk. And I don't think he's like that refined or well-rounded. I think he's a um, go up and get it guy. Lack of separation there. And I don't know. But 51, it seems like a good spot to take a shot. And you need someone else. And you're not getting George Pickens 2.0. You're getting... Um, Maybe, I mean, maybe, actually, but without the attitude. <laughs> Malachi Corley can make sense here. Xavier Leggett, Tez Walker, they're all on the board, but Jalen Polk uh, prevails as a stealer to me. Kingsley Sua Mataia, the BYU tackle, goes to Los Angeles, uh, to, Los Angeles to, to play for the Rams behind Alaric Johnson or right in front of Suamata he is a is a project. I think you have to understand that when you're drafting him, he's not refined. He's going to miss. He's going to whiff. He's going to have to go through some learning process. So that's fine. He's got tools, and I think that's all teams are looking for in the NFL anyways. So 52, Suamata Ia, obviously you can't miss with these... Um, what are they? Polynesian. And I think the Suamata Ia is like the cousin of Panay Sewell. There's connections all over the place, and I hope this doesn't come off as racist, but I don't know. And they seem like good people and players, and they work out in the NFL. So I'm taking one at 52 for the Los Angeles Rams, and I'm sure you'd be happy about it. Peyton Wilson. Now, how much does medical uh, matter for you? Because Peyton Wilson has had a historically bad injury history, and he's assured teams and people in the media that he's passed it. This is his last one. This is unfortunate and that he is just going to play good ball now. And from here on out, you can't guarantee anything like that, obviously. But Peyton Wilson says, like, he feels like it's just been a strain of bad luck after a few, like, maybe, I think, like, two or three torn ACLs. And he's kind of just, like, strung that out. And then a uh, most recent injury. But, yeah, he's really good. First-round linebacker tape is something I've seen on him. He's got, like, the 40 time was amazing. Wilson can fly and... Who knows if he gets taken higher than this or if medicals play into the role and he goes lower than this. But it's a need and Philadelphia gets a linebacker at 53. Edrin Cooper now going to be drafted. Or will he? There he goes. He finally pops off to the Cleveland Browns. Now we saw the two defensive linemen go back to back. Now we're seeing the two linebackers. Texas A&M, they have a real athlete here. I don't think that his brain, I mean, he says Fred Warner. He wants to be Fred Warner. He models his game there uh, after Fred Warner and has talked about that pretty a lot. <laughs> he's talked about it. And Cooper, to me, he's a good player. I haven't watched, you know, extensive on him and stuff like that. So I couldn't give you the full rundown. But Cooper, he seems to be good, uh, you know, good between the ears. Uh, if you guys don't know what that means, he means in the brain. He seems like he's a good thinker and he's got the traits to be a middle linebacker. A lot of things work out for him. He's a good athlete, kind of flies around. He goes from one spot to another pretty quickly. Not sideline to sideline, I wouldn't say, because I just haven't heard that. From him so but yeah but yeah I, I like the player i like this the fit i like the, the spot here leaving out a lack of linebackers i think they added one via free agency this year at some point but i know they lost anthony walker and they've got someone else or sione taki taki's gone now and they just left with a couple of young guys that have some injury concerns so uh yeah Cooper off the board, 54 to the Cleveland Browns. Going to be Chris Braswell for me at 55 for the Miami. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to call them Minneapolis real quick, but Miami Dolphins. They need edge rushing help. I know they had like edge rushers from galore, Van Ginkle. They had Jalen Phillips and they had Bradley Chubb this last year. And while that was good, 
they all got injured and that really hurt them and their chances. So Braswell would come in. I mean, I think he could learn a lot. He's still in contact with his ex-teammate or I guess ex-Alabama teammate, Will Anderson, who's in the league and they, they still keep in touch. Him, Dallas Turner and Will Anderson are all really close. I think uh, in, a, in a group chat and they talk about football a lot in there. So that's good. You're getting kind of a, an early start, if you will. And you know a lot of talent that goes to the NFL through Alabama. It's a good school if you didn't know. And uh, Braswell off the board, 55 to the Miami Dolphins. More of a power player, by the way. I know I didn't really hit on him too much, and I probably won't for a lot of these guys down here. Xavier Leggett to the Cowboys at 56. Michael Gallup rumored to be gone by the time season starts. Uh, you got C.D. Lamb, you got Brandon Cooks. He's a little bit on the older side. I don't know if they picked up any free agency I, or any in free agency. I doubt it because I feel like I would have heard about it and considering it's America's team and, and, you know, media would have blown up. My phone probably would have gotten five notifications because they, they brought in Scotty freaking Miller. Who knows? Uh, look at player that goes off the board here. I don't think they really have someone like this. C.D. Lamb, he's really good. Uh, he just, look at, you can put him anywhere. He's a tough guy too and, I think he can get end arounds as well. I mean, he doesn't he's not similar to CeeDee Lamb. He's a big guy, 6'1, 225 or 223, 220 around there. Not saying like he's one-sided, but he's kind of a utility until you find out what to do with him. I think that's kind of the best way to put it right now. And Leggett's physically imposing, and that kind of just raises him up. A lot of people get in the, the DK Metcalf talk. I think you're in a 439 or 438, somewhere in that range. Leggett's a freak. All right. And that you're going to keep it there. I think he's still very good, and people are still starting to shy down on Leggett. And I do hear some people actually climbing back up on the Leggett train. Kyrie Jackson to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's a good athlete. Talk about a tall guy too, by the way. I think he's like 6'4", and he moves still pretty well, like 4'5", like low 4'5", maybe even high 4'4", which very good, by the way, if you guys didn't know for a guy of his size. Kyrie Jackson carries some pretty good... Um, animosity to him as well his energy levels always up he seems like a trash talker him and brandon rice got into it at the senior bowl it seemed like playful like banter almost if you will but um yeah he just seems to be a character guy you don't have uh carlton davis there anymore obviously he gets traded out jamel dean wasn't all that reliable so maybe this do you see this as an overdraft i personally don't i think a guy would traits like Kyrie. i think they should go higher more often than not i think you can't just like I mean, look at Reek Wollen, and I know he was actually a, a, a real freak. And Kyrie Jackson all the way down here at 57. And, you know, way it different ways here, right? But I, I like Kyrie Jackson, size, boundary, corner, everything like that. And he's not sound by any means. You might see some, some screw-ups from him early, but that's just fine for me, actually. Junior Colson off the board, inside linebacker or outside, depending on where we want to, you know, put Quay Walker as he's taken over as, like, the guy now... Uh, we have known more Devondre Campbell. And Junior Colson comes in. I mean, he can get around a defense. He's a power player. If you guys don't remember or know who he is, he was the one with the club on his hand with for Michigan. I know some people out there like watch, you know, the college football uh, ending. They don't really know the players. And, and there Colson was with the club on his left, maybe right arm. I would say left if I had to guess, though. His left hand. And it was, like, super imposing to watch. Very new to football. He grew up, um, I think, I just, so, somewhere else. I knew that. And then he moved over here and thought he was going to be, like, a soccer player or something. I can't remember the whole story. But very high character player. Someone that loves football. Someone that loves his teammates. And some adversity there. And also a fast learner. And that's something you really like at middle linebacker. Give me Junior Colson. I'd actually be really hyped to have a guy like him on my Green Bay Packers, all right? And this isn't mocking my favorite players. If I was mocking my favorite players here, this might become, you know, Patrick Paul. I mean, there, there are names that can go around. Johnny Wilson, actually, the receiver. Jermaine Burton, Tez Walker. I can even, you know, go around and show you, but unfortunately, my computer doesn't like to. So <laughs> what can I tell you? Speaking of Tez Walker, we're going to go with him right now. And off the board, he goes. And you could think about like Malachi Corley here. Jermaine Burton sure makes a lot of sense, but I think Metch is kind of Jermaine Burton. And then um, they have Tank Dell, so I'm not drafting Malachi Corley. They're the same player, but they play in the same spot, basically. Um, Tez Walker, just a, a refined player. I think someone that's dropped way too far now just because of a bad senior bowl performance. Maybe you're anxious. Maybe 
you know you're not used to the quarterback throwing there's some other things going on maybe you have an injury in your pinky finger or bone bruise and it hurts you and he just dropped everything at the senior bowl and then comes out has a very solid combine and his tape was really good a first round grade for most people on his tape and then he has a bad senior bowl people walk back on that and i wasn't surprised to see him have a good combine i still believe in the player and shouldn't be going this low but again Mock drops are more what you hear versus what you see. I see a very good player in Tez Walker, and I don't think that he's bad at all. The uh, unfortunate side of that is, I guess, the the narrative driven on Walker has has had its ride, and it's been a, a bad one for him. And he's down here at 59 getting picked. Marshawn Neeland for the Buffalo Bills, if that ever wants to, you know, go. Okay. Uh, they have AJ Epinesa. I know that. They have Vaughn Miller. I know that. And they have one other guy. Uh, put it Greg Roussel possibly they're gonna need someone else over time I mean honestly AJ Epines is good Von Miller might get hurt sorry not my he probably will get hurt and then Nealon playing valuable uh, rotation minutes with Epines on the other side of Rousseau maybe bring in another guy like a veteran I don't know but Nealon's another good guy power but good lord and he'll just try to get into your chest pick you up and throw you back into your own quarterback and that's just the type of player he is and the type of player you're getting at 60 with a, a thinned out position group that used to be kind of strong for Buffalo. Best pick of the mock at 61 to the Detroit Lions. I hate to do this to a division rival of mine, but Christian Haynes, the nasty offensive guard that's going to Detroit where he'd be very well used. Graham Glasgow and Jonah Jackson both hit free agency. Those are their starting guards. They were able to bring back and retain Graham Glasgow, but Jonah Jackson off to the was it the panthers now maybe I, I can't remember they paid big he got big money anything like that uh but haynes ends up you know being the replacement there i don't mind it at all again a nasty guy and maybe he needs a little bit of refinement but i like the fire again and then the effort the motor everything's good for haynes i like the player at 61 i think he's a detroit lion for sure i think he fits the bill and uh or is it fits the build is it the bill or the build let me know i need to know i've been kind of curious about that one for a while patrick paul he actually wants to go be a paul attition in nigeria i believe and with uh all that being said obviously he's a character guy i think there's a lot to him that a lot of people don't talk about he's very lengthy very tall very well built actually pretty athletic as well watched him run routes at the senior bowl try to catch footballs that's good I like um, this pick for Baltimore a lot, missing out on a tackle in the first round and then rebounding at 62, getting Patrick Paul is great, great, great value. And by the way, they have added compensation picks, to my surprise, into the mock drafts in between, I guess it must have been yesterday. And so I'm only going up to the Kansas City picks. All right, that, that's, that's as far as I go. I'm sorry to cut you guys short. I could just do these picks, but Patrick Paul and San Francisco or Patrick Paul and the Baltimore Ravens, San Francisco and whoever they select and Kansas City and whoever they select is where I'm stopped. Apologize, but it's just I, I what not prepared to do anymore. And I'm, I'm really, really tired. Jonah Ellis, a very similar situation to what the Buffalo Bills, like what they just did in this mock draft. And a lot of it was the thinning out at the pos position group and I think that Jonah Ellis is different than a lot of things they have there. He's a very fun one to watch, and I can't wait to dive into some of these edge rushers, defensive in general, like players, to get a better look. But Jonah Ellis, from what I've heard, from what I've seen so far, I'm a fan of, big fan. And Ellis hopefully prevails and re, uh, I guess shows up on tape and reassures me in my opinions on him. I think he should actually be picked much higher than this. I've had him going inside of the top 45. So that tells you how high I've been on him at some points, but ends up just falling. I think Ed Rusher in general, like Booker, you might push to get off. Adisa Isaac, I'm not extremely high on. And it's Rook O Ro Ro Ro, your boat down the stream and not a I'm not doing that. All right. I'm not making fun of a man's name. That is how he said to remember is, oh, row, row your boat gently down the stream. That, he said that in an interview. So sorry if I'm using the guy's tactics to remember his own name. All right. But listen, he's a little bit more slimmed down, but a very high upside player, pass rusher on the interior. That's again, very uh, powerful, but also swift, nice feet. He's got a pretty big body, which kind of stops him from just going, blowing past everyone like, Braden Fisk is the one that comes to mind when you hear like just straight up agility, fast quickness off the line. But Ruko Row Row Row. Oh yeah, I think so. Rook Row 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 or something. Yeah, whatever, whatever his name is. It's it's fun to say. Uh, you know, Scooby Doo comes to your mind. A lot of different things. Rook O Row Row Row. Good last pick of the draft. 
and hopefully you guys enjoyed if you guys did go ahead and like go down and subscribe go check the past content on the channel it means a lot and i'll see you guys next time deuces